All right, here's a great how-to. This how-to is all about doing a little bit of uh, key combinations in your game. So we remember these from the days of like Street Fighter and stuff where you had to go like up, up, down, down, left button press, and then something cool would happen. Or in Mortal Kombat, you'd uh, do like 20 keys in a row and then you'd rip out the guy's heart. So a student comes up and he says, I want to do some key combos in my game, right, that the players have to figure out. And so we tried to work out a simple enough way uh, to code it using what they already know how to do. So here's what we're going to be making. Basically, I have a little guy here. Right now, he can move right with the D key, left with the A key. So left and right. And you can see here it's keeping track of which key was pressed. But it's doing more than that. If I keep pressing D, it's actually recording the keys pressed. But at a certain amount of time, it's erasing the memory of the keys that I've pressed. So if I press D, 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 A, you can see here the older the key, it's being erased, ugh, erased from memory. So the idea here is, is if I can do a combo, and my combo is A, D, A, D. So let's say I go A, D, A, D. It knows that, and then it can uh, do the special effect. Okay, But if you do it too slow, A, D, A, D. Yeah, nothing's going to happen, right? We know these moves have to be done fast. That's part of the erasing the keys from memory is that that way the combo has to be done in a certain amount of time, which is all customizable with our simple little method here. And then my other one is triple A. Okay, for doing the, uh, the little smoke puff. So let's take a look at how this is done. So I've tried to code this all in the player. Uh, not something I would normally do, but at least it keeps it simple, right, for looking at the code. So here we go. I have the player and create method, and I'm keeping track of basically four variables here. Uh, these three are just for settings, but I'm keeping track of this important one called keys. Keys is set empty to start with, but what's going to happen as I press keys, it's going to do this. Like as I press A, A, D, D, A, D, it's going to be adding those keys on to the end so it grows. And so I always have a little bit of a memory of the last keys pressed. Then what I'm going to do is, based on this variable, time remove, which you can see here is just set to 15 divided by 30, which is half, right, 0.5, is every half second, I'm going to remove the first letter from that string. So it shrinks, right? I don't need to keep track of all of them. And this also forces the user to enter that key code in fast enough that it's there. Like if I enter really slowly, A, D, A, before I hit that next D, that A is going to be erased, right? And that's not going to count as a combo. So that's what time remove is. It's how long I wait before removing these. So it should be sort of small, right? Don't make it too long. Time step is what you estimate every step of your program uh, taking. Like if I have my room set to 30 steps a second in the room, this is just 1 30th of a second. Normally, I would say to use delta time divided by a million. Is that a million? Anyway, six zeros on there. Hard to see here. Uh, you would use that, but you know, this is good for beginners. That'll work, right? One thirtieth of a second every step. And time total, I'm just keeping track as time's passing, you know, has this amount of time passed yet. So every single step, I'll add one thirtieth to my total time. Let's go take a look at the actual code. I can just leave that there if I want, like that. And I'll just show you one other thing here. I have a draw object just to show you what it's drawing. My key combo is just drawing out that keys variable so we can see the history of the keys. And it's drawing out time total just so you can see that resetting and building as time passes on. Now, here's the beef of the code. So the first part is actually just in the second little script here. It's handle key press. And all I'm doing is I'm just checking if a key was actually pressed down. So you'll see here, key pressed, right? Was the key pressed in this last step? I check for the letter A. If it was, I say keys is keys plus capital A. And basically, if you haven't worked with strings a lot, if our string was A, D, D, A, A, D, D, and I add on an A, it just adds on the A like that. So the string grows. So nice, simple thing you can do with words and letters. And if they hit D, I add the letter D. This part here is just to show you, you know, I'm doing an actual keyboard check again. 
just as the key press down just to move the player left or right. And I just sort of do that separately. Now that we know the key's string can build, which you saw in the sample, what do we do with it as it's building? Well, I do this page of code here, which looks longer than it actually is. Remember, the font's big. This is going to make use of a lot of string commands uh, in the solution here. If you've never done any work with words and letters before, that's worth it. It's common to every programming language to search out string commands, and you can see them all right here. There's a whole bunch. You can uh, do things like find out how long they are with string length script, and you can extract parts of your string out. So I don't want the whole word. I just want part of the word to come out, and you can do that. It's a weird naming game maker. It's called string copy. Most languages, it'll be called something like substring. Okay, but here they decided string copy. So let's see how these methods are used. So first thing I'm going to do here is I ask myself, how many keys are we currently remembering in that keys variable? So remember that when I start, key starts with nothing. And then as I add on keys, it's going to grow bigger and bigger. I want to know how long this is. That's going to be important for a lot of parts of this routine. Now I ask myself here, if the length of the keys I'm remembering is bigger than zero, so basically am I remembering any keys at all, then I can increase the time total variable. Now remember the time total variable is this one here that's just keeping track of how long has it been since I last axed a letter off the front, right? Because remember I'm doing that. If a letter's old, I get rid of it. Right? And the new ones are added on to the end. And so when I do this code here, I add time step. Right? And remember, time step was just, I had set it to 1 30th right? of a second. Now, if this all goes okay here, right? I add the time, that's good. Now, what I have to do all the time is I want to see if enough time has passed I want to take the first letter off of the key string. So if time total has gotten greater or equal to time remove, and remember time remove was set to a little bit larger, half, right? Half a second. So I could have just typed 0.5 there. If you want the player to have to do them really fast, make it 0.3. If you want to be generous, make it 0.9, right? I'll just leave it half. Then here comes my take off the first letter. The first thing I do is I put time total back to zero because I'm going to reset the process again. And I say if the length is greater than zero, which I actually don't have to check. I'm going to take that out right now. There we go. Then I do this script here that's built into Game Maker called string copy. Now string copy, basically you give it a string. You tell it where to start in the string, so which letter number, and you tell it how many letters you would like to grab, and it will send you back the answer. So you can see what I've done here. I've said take my keys array, or sorry, my keys string, start at position two, and grab the length of that string less one. So let's just do a little sample on that one here. Let's say this was my letters, uh, my keys right now. One, two, three, four, five. So I got 10 letters that the user's quickly been hammering out. So the length of this string is 10 because there's 10 letters. My code says start at position two. So start here. And it said grab length minus one. So length, which was 10, minus one is nine. So if I start at position two, and I grab nine out. Basically what we're doing is we're going to grab that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm grabbing basically the rest. And so it's grabbing everything from the string except for the first letter. Basically that first letter is not coming back. So that's what I get sent back. And that's what keys now get set to. So basically the first letter has been dropped out Okay, when you do this. So that's how I'm ditching the first letter. 
And because I set the time back to zero here, it'll just keep counting and counting. Eventually, you know, in half a second later, it'll do it again. It'll take another key off, and that's why the keys are disappearing. So this is the uh, oldest key, get rid of it code, right in here. Now, the next part is, is you want to check, has the user typed in the special key combos? So what we're going to do here is I basically need a little code. Uh, if I know my key combos are, let's say, four-letter combos or three-letter combos, I basically need to grab what are the last four keys hit, and I need to grab what are the last three keys hit, and just do little if statements. So you can see down here, my if statements are coded. I've asked here, were the last four keys equal to ring combo? And ring combo was AD, AD. And here I'm going if the last three is equal to cloud combo, and cloud combo up here is AAA, then you know, do the cloud combo effect. Now, how do we actually get the last four and the last three? Well, you probably guessed it. We use this string copy script again. We just got to put in the right numbers, so I actually grab the last four out. So here's what I do. I grab the length of the key string again, okay? And so let's say in this case, it's this here. Let's just pretend it's all 10 of those. That's what it currently is. So I have a length of 10. And then what I want to do, I'll just leave this here. And then what I want to do is I use string copy, keys, length. And since I'm trying to grab the last four, I go length minus four plus one. So just stick with me here. The last four keys is that one that one, that one, and that one. It starts at seven. So it's 10, the length, minus four, which would bring me four back, but then add one, because I know it actually has to start on seven. When I want to grab the last three letters, I go the length, which is 10, I minus three, so one, two, three would take me to seven, but I know that starting at seven would grab me four letters. So again, I add one, so I'm really starting at eight. And so you sort of see the pattern there, right? If you want to grab a six combo, it would be the length minus six plus one. And of course I want four letters out and I want three letters from these starting positions. And that basically grabs you out the last four letters and the last three letters. Once you got those, you just do the simple task of just asking, what are they? And so if last four is equal to ring combo, do whatever you have to do or whatever you're going to make a bullet, power up, change states, move, explode. And also just remember now, they've just done a combo. You may as well clear the keys, reset it back to nothing, and clear the time back to nothing. And so you're sort of starting fresh again. Then the whole process starts again. They hit keys, keys will build, um, time will add up. You'll remove the old keys, find the last four, the last three, the last five, whatever you want to do there, and then you can check. And you can see again when this actually works, we'll just give it another run. And you can see here that it's my original there. Building, I keep hitting D. You can see how this is working. It is like scrolling, and it's always deleting the oldest one. You can see the counter every time it hits 0.5 seconds, right? It's taking the letter off. But if I actually do the right combo, ADVD, fast enough, right? Perfect, right? But if you don't do it fast enough, you know, you get a mess. Now, I'm just going to throw one last thing there I just noticed on that last run was if they hit a lot of keys really fast, it takes a while for uh, all those keys to sort of destroy the keys until the key string becomes small. So one last thing you may want to do here is just do this one here. If time total is greater or equal to time removed or the string length of keys, let's say you know your longest combo is uh, six keys, then you may want to say this. Or if it's bigger than six, time total is zero and remove the first key. What this will do is this will prevent the thing from getting too long when I hit keys really fast. And I'll just give that a little test here. You'll see that I can hit the keys super fast. But see, I can never get over six keys, right? So that's sort of probably something you also want to add in there. Anyways, you can grab that project from uh, 
from the website if you want. Anyways, that's key combos. There's other ways to do this uh, that may be a little more glamorous or sexy in the coding world, but this is a nice way to do it that uh, you know beginning students can usually sort of get a grip on, and it introduces you to uh, string commands, or at least a few little string commands and working with the strings. So hopefully that helps. Add a couple of those in your game. Those are always great for cheat codes. Thanks for watching. Have fun with that. Hey guys, if you like this video, why not click the like button or even better, subscribe to this channel, share it with a couple friends. That's what keeps us going. Thanks.